Welcome back again. In this video, I'm going to take you through some of the basics of polyatomic ions. And polyatomic ions are basically what they sound like. Poly meaning more than one, and atomic meaning atoms. So they are groups of atoms which are ions. So I've got a list here on my uh, computer which shows you some of the most, uh, some of the more common polyatomic ions that you'll uh, likely to encounter. However, if you want to see a more of a complete list, you can visit my website, which has a link um, in uh, over here to Science, Science Geek, which uh, has a whole um, a, a lot more detail on some of the period of the. Um, the variety of polyatomic ions. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be any rule that goes along with these to make it easy to remember which one, or to remember them all. So it is going to be one of those things in chemistry where you just have to rote learn them, somehow memorize them. There's flashcards. Uh, I built a little flashcard thing on my web page, so that should be, that should hopefully work. So over here, you can now go, so you click on it. Sodium ion. You click, uh, and it flips over the card so you can see the ion charge. Uh, so, uh, fluoride, if you click on it, flips over. Uh, there's also some polyatomics in there as well. So, chlorate, which is a polyatomic. You click it, it flips it over. Uh, there's also other activities here, so if I just move the window across. Um, there, one of my favorite types is to play uh, scatter. So when you click the scatter mode, you basically drag and drop uh, the name and the formula together, and you uh, and you basically learn them that way. So uh, silver is argentum, so a you know, bromide, so it's Br, so I link them up, and lead too, so lead should be somewhere around here, Pb2, and so on and so forth, and you can, you can uh, memorize them that way. And it's a lot more fun than just having flashcards. So I highly recommend doing that activity, and it should get you, you know, 80% of the way there. All right. So let's get back to our video here. I've got the list of some of the most common ones that you'll tend to come across um, in, your, uh, in your exams or assignments or examples here. So uh, here's a little table, a, a very small selection of the table. And uh, on the right-hand side here, I've got some of the uh, questions that I'm going to attempt. So I'm going to write down the formula for calcium carbonate. So I look up calcium on the table. Here it is. Calcium's got a two, plus two charge. So I'll write calcium here, 2 plus charge. And then I look up carbonate, which is this one here. Carbonate, it has a 2 negative charge. So now we examine the, uh, the compound and we see, is this neutrally charged overall? Two positives, two negatives, it ba balances, so that is uh, very simple to write. So that becomes Ca. CO3. Let's do the next one. So this one we got magnesium phosphate. So I look up on the table, look for magnesium. Oh, there it is, just very close by the calcium. Uh, it also has a 2 plus charge, so I write magnesium. And then you look up phosphate. Phosphate, uh, here it is, PO4, 3 minus. So I write in the same thing here, PO4. 3 minus. Now we examine, is it, char is it balanced? Is the charges balanced and forming a neutral compound overall? Uh, not in this case. We've got a 2 plus and a 3 minus charge. Now if we think back in a previous video, I mentioned a rule that works very well when you've got these situations where it's not very easy to tell uh, what ratio of these two, uh, you know, the, the cations to anions. It's not very easy to tell. So we use a rule called the crossover rule. So we take this two from the top corner of magnesium and we place it down here next to the phosphate. And we take that three, we cross it over to the other side, put it next to the magnesium. So we write, rewrite this, magnesium, and the number that's next to it is this three. Now we get to the phosphate. Now, I've got two phosphate groups. This is the thing about polyatomic ions. You have to treat them as if they were one big group. And it might be familiar to you for, uh, say, maybe algebra. When you're trying to uh, multiply groups of things, you put brackets around it. And the same thing happens in chemistry. If you've got a polyatomic ion and, and you need to double it up, triple it up, or so on, you put brackets around it and put it all two or three uh, towards the side. So 
uh, right in my regular PO4, but I want two of them, so I put brackets around it and I put two on the outside there. Okay, uh, let's do the next one here, aluminium sulfate. sulfate. <laughs> All right, so aluminium, let's go looking for it. Uh, aluminium is over here. So it's going to be a, a positive three charge. And uh, we've got sulfate, so it's SO4, 2 minus. Let's look at this one. Is it balanced? Uh, no, it's not neutrally charged overall. And it's also got that 3 and, one, uh, three and 2 uh, charge, which will require us, require us to use the crossover rule again to uh, solve for the answer. So here we go. We take that 3, put it next to the sulfate. We take that 2 in the top right corner and we cross it over and we put it next to the aluminium. So we rewrite this now, aluminium, and there's a 2 next to it now. We've got the sulfate, so SO4, but we want three groups of that, so I have to use my brackets. And we put the 3 down there, and we're done. These ones are more of the complex examples. Uh, I'm pretty sure most of the examples that you will come across will be a little bit simpler than this. That won't, re won't require you to do the crossover rule, but I thought I'd throw in a couple of those into this uh, video so that you are prepped and primed um, in case you do encounter some of those tricky ones. I want to take you through a, a different example now where uh, we are going to do the formula and then go back to the name. So let's look it up on our table here. I've got Na, Na is for natrium, which is a Latin name for sodium, so sodium's over here. And we have NO3, NO3, I think that is, that's nitrate. It's right here on my list, nitrate, so we just write it down. So with ionic compounds, the metal's name doesn't change. Uh, so it's, if it's a sodium atom, it becomes a sodium ion, sodium. And we got the nitrate. Now. I might take a moment here just to pause for a second before we go to the other examples. I want you to notice for a second that when you've got a polyatomic ion, the name, the, the suffix, the last three letters will tell you whether it is a uh, monoatomic ion or a polyatomic ion. If it's a polyatomic ion, it'll have things like eight you know, sulfate, carbonate, phosphate, or you sometimes can get uh, nitrite, uh, sulfite, uh, phosphite. It's a different suffix, but it also indicates it's a polyatomic ion. The only case where it's not a polyatomic ion is when you've got IDE. Remember the examples we had before in the previous video for um, binary ionic compounds? So this will be things like nitride, phosphide, sulfide, oxide, fluoride, chloride, bromide, sel sel uh, selenium, eh. But you get the point. If it's IDE, you know instantly it's a singular, um, it's, it's a monatomic um, ion. If it's got anything else, so ITE, ATE, that tells you it must be a polyatomic ion. So keep that in mind, guys, because I do see that's a very common error. I see people try and write sodium nitride, when they should be writing nitrate, and it's a really unfortunate thing because they got a little bit confused. So keep that in mind, guys. Uh, let's go to the next example. So we got uh, SR, SR, I think that is uh, strontium. Let's go look for strontium. Here we go, strontium is there. And we've got PO4, PO4, I think that is phosphate. So there we go, so we've got strontium, phosphate. And just like the previous example when we did the binary ionic formulas, uh, when you write out the name, uh, you don't have to indicate the quantities of each one. So you don't do you don't do things like carbon dioxide. That's only applicable to um, covalent molecules. Uh, ionic formulas don't have to do that. So you just say strontium phosphate. That's all you need to uh, to say. Uh, the last one here we got aluminium, and we've got nitrate again. All right, that's it, guys. Um, don't forget to check my website on anglesandacid.com. I'll have uh, more examples for you to, uh, or more practice uh, problems for you to try, and some solutions so you can check your answers to see if you're on the right track. All right, see you later, guys.